see everyone today. And, um, as I'm doing announcements, if the choir would actually start working themselves up to the um, podium, um, and um, they're, uh, they're going to share one of the cantata songs with us this morning. Uh, but just a few announcements. Uh, first of all, um, we are we are taking orders for our T-shirts um, yet. So if you have not signed up or have not responded to Linda about the church um, uh, theme shirts for the year, please let her know your size. We'd like to have everybody have a shirt this year. Um, and uh, the youth um, uh, new print shop is actually going to be printing them. So um, it, it's kind of exciting to, to keep that in house and to be a, a part of that. So um, Also, our leadership retreat, again, is January 20th and 21st. If you have not signed up, um, papers on the back, please please sign up for that. So um, you bow your heads for prayer, and then we're going to let the cantata share some with us. Heavenly Father, just thank you so much for this morning to be able to be in your house and to recognize the birth of your son today. Lord, uh, looking forward to a great morning of worship that we can come and just honor you in, in, uh, in song and in the word. So, Father, we ask you to be with us now as, as, uh, as we, we start our service.
if you weren't here for our, 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 our children's um, and youth uh, play that we did a couple weeks ago, uh, Hannah played a, a piano song, and it's, uh, it's from Germany is what it is, um, and, uh, and she's actually going to sing in, in, in German to us um, because her voice is solid and strong today, right? And, uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, we're going to sit back and listen to your song.
everybody's having a, a great Christmas and and uh, your, your family and people that you have in your life are coming to see you today or last night or when it was. Um, you ever have that one person in the family that you kind of sidestep on inviting them? Do you? You ever think of your family tree and you wonder, how in the world did I get where I'm at? What a messed up thing that was. Family trees are, are really, really funny. I remember growing up, we used to, uh, we used to not make fun of, but kind of kid around about uh, Uncle George. Um, he was kind of our, our, that one guy. That one guy that, you mean you guys didn't invite him? Uncle George, he had a multitude of women in his life. He had a multitude of kids. Um, he liked the bottle. Matter of fact, uh, I had a whole bunch of people on one side of the family that liked the whole the bottle. And, um, and, and, and you think about, where in the world did I come from? Just think for a moment, your family tree. Might be your generation just ahead of you, or it might be eight generations back that the stories still continue to flow through the, through the house about that one person. Christmas Eve and Christmas morning is a time to reflect on, on who Jesus was and, and what he came for, but just like I did last night, I, I'm not taking this down a kind of traditional avenue. Today we're going to look at the knots in, in Jesus' family tree. You see, Jesus didn't come from a, a uh, perfect family. There was Abraham who, who tried to cut his 
son Isaac's throat, survived only to be the father of Jacob, who was an unscrupulous but entertaining kind of guy who won his position in Jesus' family's line by lying and cheating to his blind old father. And Jacob, God cheated himself when, when he got to know the, the wrong girl by mistake and became the father of Judah. And Judah made the same mistake with his own daughter-in-law, Tamara. Tamara had, had cheated on him, cheated him in distinguishing herself as a prostitute. I'm telling you this today because there are all kinds of sorts of people that you probably wouldn't invite to Christmas. Jesus had a number of them. Bo Boaz was one. Ruth was one. Ra Rahab. Rahab. Here's what she was a prostitute. That was a that was a that was a, a great 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 grandmother of Jesus. David. He was a power hungry peep and Tom kind of guy too, wasn't he? Then you had Joseph. Here's Joseph. He gets hooked up with a girl who gets pregnant without being married. How messed up of a tree is that? I want you to think about your, your family tree a little bit. I want you to think about exactly who Jesus was in, in his family tree, in our family tree. Matthew doesn't tell us about the shepherds filled with the good news. I mean, the beginning of Matthew has a whole genealogy of Jesus. You see, he, he thought it was very important to say, this is where Jesus came from, and this is where we're going to go with him. And because, again, you know, Luke, he, I mean, he brings a really warm, fuzzy kind of approach to Jesus and who his life was and, and everything else. But here's Matthew. I'm going to lay it out for you right away. Here's a genealogy of Jesus. I'm not going to tell you about the shepherds. I'm going to tell you about all the warm, fuzzy stuff. I'm going to get into the fact that, that um, you know, he's, he's telling us that, that here's the Emmanuel, which is God with us. He's going to tell us about that. But he's going to lay out the whole Christmas story in a little different way. Think about how complicated of a life that Jesus was being born into. The heritage that he had. Do you think there's a reason why Jesus' line was a certain way it was? I do. I think Jesus had to look back in his life and say, you know what? I wasn't just born for that perfect person. I was born for all these messed up guys. Because the ones who you remember are the ones who are messed up. The ones who, who fall and fall short of what, what, um, what really God has intended for us. But what was Jesus born for? To die for us. <coughs> to take our sins away. What Nikki said in prayer today, we no longer need to rip down that, um, that, that, you know, the curtain. We didn't, no longer need to sacrifice a lamb on the altar. We don't have to do these things. Jesus Christ was born for that particular reason. But the biggest part here, and I want to look at Matthew 1, 18 through 24 once. I'm not going to look at the whole Christmas story here. We, we know the Christmas story. We know Jesus was born. You know, we know all these kind of things. So we put that up here. It says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, let me, let me get it opened up here. It says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had, had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. I mean, that, that's what Matthew's focusing on here, about who Jesus was. He's telling us that here's, a, here's God coming here in this world as a human being to be with us, to be in us. Because what happened when Jesus died and he, he went on, he left the Holy Spirit with us. So he continues to be with us. God with us. 2 Chronicles 13, 12 through 15. 
talks about this very much. He says, God is with us. He is our leader. His priests with their trumpets will sound the battle cry against you. Men of Israel, do not fight against the Lord, the God of your fathers, for you will not succeed. Now Jeroboam had sent troops around to the rear, so that while he was, he was in, in, in front of Judah, the ambush was behind them. Judah turned and he saw that they were being attacked at both front and rear. Then they cried out to the Lord. The priests blew their trumpets and, and the men of Judah raised their battle cry. At that very sound of the battle, battle cry, God, God routed Jeroboam and all of Israel before Abda and, 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 and Judah. Now, what he's talking about here is God with us. I mean, it, and, and what he's saying is, you know, the heritage that we hand down. Because, believe it or not, you might be one of those in-laws that are being sidestepped on being invited to Christmas. Got pretty quiet in here. You're thinking, man, that's why I wasn't invited. No. But I want you to think about it. How are you living your life? You know, God, Jesus was born for a certain reason, to show us a direction and path to our God. He is the bridge. He's the one who, who was born to do that, to die for us, and to give us new life through his son. And he says, God with us. You know, it says God is with us even, even, even with, as, as he was with our ancestors. You see, the same God that was with your ancestors that were six generations ago, that were kind of the, 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 the cast outs of the family. The same God with them is with us today. And the same issues are going on today as they were six generations ago. So we have to figure out, are these people condemned or are they saved? Well, they're saved. If they call on the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and recognize that he was born for that particular reason, put their confidence and trust in him, they will be clean. They will be clean. It doesn't matter what they've done. It doesn't matter where, where, they, what they, you know, where they've been. And it doesn't matter how many family members have pushed them out of their life because of what they've done. He never does. See, he looks back to this, and I think he kind of rejoices because, because the people that, that we're talking about here turned her life around. Rahab turned her life around. She went up against her people, but she also had a direction towards God. Bathsheba, David. I mean, David, obviously, King David, this is Jesus' heritage. It says in Isaiah that, 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 that Jesus will be under his, his lineage. This will be an ancestry. David went to him, and, and if you read, you know, the Psalms and the Proverbs, and, and, or the, 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 the Proverbs, and I mean, just really, really look at it and see how David cried out to God. He knew God was with him every step of the way. And the question is, do we recognize that today, that we still know that God is with us? He is the Emmanuel. He's the one that we need to be seek, seeking and searching. That's what Matthew lays it all out. He tells us this baby is Emmanuel, God with us, God for us, as one with God in the flesh. <clears throat> this is important to us, to know that Jesus came here. He continues to be with us. God with you. God with me. We can't just take, you know, again, the warm, fuzzy approach to the gospel of, of um when Jesus was born and, and brought here. We have to look at things a little deeper. I mean, they, they, these, are, are, these are people that cried out to God on a continuous basis. They needed him because they messed up. Do we sit back and we say, man, I don't want Uncle George to come to my Christmas today. And then we think, we have it all together? How about if I was in that, 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 that situation? We'd want family to grab on. We want loved ones to grab onto us and give them a path to the manger. Give them, give them what they need in their life and not what they don't need. Because the more times people are pushed away, the more times they're going to run from God. So if we embrace and we bring in and we accept who they are and what they're about, you know, we don't have to sit and, and be embarrassed by who they are. But I think about Jesus' background a little bit. In everything that has happened afterwards. Disciples were messed up people. 
Do you think the stories of the ancestors of Jesus, of David, of Jeroboam, of, of all these people, um, of Jacob, I mean, of Tamra, of, of even Abraham, do you think that allowed him to minister to the people when he was doing his ministry better? Yeah. Do you think when he went to the woman at the well and he knew that she has been living with this, this, this guy and she's had many husbands and many people, many, many men in her life, do you not think in his head he was thinking, this is like my grandmother Rahab. She's living the same life that she did. And she turned around. She got better. She did what she needed to do. How about this woman at the well? How about if I just tell her, you know what? What if I just offer you this living water? Will you grab onto it? And she did, didn't she? And then she went back in her community and she had a huge impact. How about the woman who's going to get stoned? You know, the same kind of thing. Do you, do you think he's singing of his, his great-grandmother Rahab and saying, you know what, I can't let these people stone. They're no better than she is. Why do they think they're better than she is? That's what Jesus came here for, to open our eyes and to, to really realize that we need to take self-examinations of ourselves before we do condemn others and to bring them in and to show Jesus' love. You see, Jesus never, never, ever condemned anybody, did he? Jesus told him about love. Now God, he'll, he'll bring on some discipline. He'll bring on some things on your life. But Jesus came to show a path to his Father. Through what? Love. Think about the people in your life that you can impact. We're going to be going into a new new series, a new theme this next year. And part of it is just getting ourselves focused on who we are and what we're about. Last year was from Acts, our, our theme this last year. The Word of God grew and it multiplied. And I pray that had happened this year. I pray that, that people have expanded our, our Sunday school attendance is, is up, our Bible studies are up, our attendance and services are up. You know, God has blessed us with tremendous things this last year. But I want you definitely in prayer about the one person. Do you remember last year when the beginning of the year I said pick one person in your life that you need to be praying for? That one person that you would think would never ever walk into a church ever in your life or even accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Have you, had, have you had that person on your heart all year? Have you invited? Have you encouraged? Or is he, he or she that person that you think, man, I just don't want to invite him. That's that one person out there that I'll pray for, but I don't necessarily want to bring him into my life. Think about that one person this morning. We have one week left in this year for you to accomplish what God has called you to go do with that one person. If you haven't invited, if you haven't prayed for him, this week's the week. See what God can do. Emmanuel, God with us. You see, God's with you. When you go knock on that person's door, when you take some to their house, when you do something for them or just pray with them, remember, God is with you. You're not in this alone. Jesus was sent here for that particular reason, for us not to be alone, to have that gap, to be that, that, that bridge between us and the Father. That's the present, that's the gift, the gift of his Son. Think about that one person as we move into this next year. Have you accomplished it? I'll guarantee you God will bless you. I guarantee that at the beginning of the year. But you got to sit back and think, did I do what I was supposed to do? Have I prayed for that one person? Have I reached out to them? Have I done what Jesus would have done? Because if Jesus is with me, I'm not alone. I'm not going to this so well. Philippians 4.13 says what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the strength. That's the promise. 
That's everything that, that gets laid out. That's one of my, my all-time favorite scriptures. Is because we get into a lot of things. And the neat thing is it doesn't say through a few things or some things. It says in all things. In Christ all things. He gives me power. So think about your genealogy today. Don't think too deep about it. It might scare you. I know it scares me. And I'm wondering what my great great grandkids will say if they say anything. He was that crazy old man. Jesus encourages us to love one another as he loved us. That's what we need to go do is we need to be pouring out into people. We can't look at someone who is flawed, but someone who can be redeemed. Amen? Think what Christ has done for, for you. Think for a moment if Jesus was never had been born. We'd still be struggling in this world. We, we wanted to hear from God. We wanted an answer. And he gave it. <coughs> Think about the promise. I want you to I'm going to read this here. It comes from Matthew 1, 17. All the generations. And, and, and look back to Matthew, the first part of Matthew. That, that says, there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David. 14 from David to the exile of Babylon. And 14 from the exile to the Messiah. There is a huge generation of people. And different things that have happened. There's a reason why the Magi were seeking to find Jesus. What's your reason? We can't think about the past. We can't think that, that I'm too tarnished to be found by Jesus. You can't think that you've done things any worse than anyone else has done. Think of King David. I love using King David for, for, for an example. Here's a king who, again, was a peeping Tom, had an affair with Bathsheba, had a child out of wedlock with her. Not only that, finds out she's pregnant, goes off and gets her husband killed. So nobody finds out. It doesn't get much worse than that. He's considered one of the greatest saints that ever lived. Why? Because he kept seeking after God. He knew he messed up. But he also knew God was with him. And he knew that the forgiveness overshadowed the past. So if nothing else this morning, forgive yourself. Seek God's forgiveness. Repent. Scripture says those who voice with their mouth and believe in their heart that the Lord Jesus Christ died for you, you believe saved. It's simple. He doesn't put stipulations on it. You see that free gift in that manger was exactly that. It was a gift. But you either accept the gift or you throw it away. There is no in-between. It's not like a toy where you get it out maybe a couple times a month or, or once in a while. Jesus says it's a free gift. This is I give to you. This, I loved you that much. I gave you my son to come and die for you. You either accept it or you don't. It's a pretty, pretty simple thing. We have to grab on to the free gift and realize there's no stipulations attached to it. You don't have to do anything to receive it. That's one great thing about Christmas. 
You give a gift because you love somebody. You don't expect anything in return. You don't expect them to have them to do anything for it. You give it because you want to give it. And you also accept it because you're a willing person who is willing to take it in. My prayer is that as we end the year here, that we really get focused. The priorities of Jesus Christ get back up on top. Not just a res resolution for next year, but a lifestyle. Be the ones who you want others to be around you because of your walk. You ever have someone just come up to you and say, I just want what you have because you're you're, you're on fire for the Lord. You're living your life right. That's it. You've accomplished it. Paul's very clear on that. Even though, you know, sure didn't accomplish it yet. But when you're in the Word and you're in prayer and when you're in a relationship with the Lord, people can tell. Scripture says that by your fruit. So, look at that priority to come back around and, and grab onto that free gift. Love your family, love each other, love that one person that is unlovable. And Jesus will be there with you to love on them, care for them, accept them, bring them in. I don't know. I look back to that, that little baby in the manger and that was strictly born to die for pretty awesome. Grab on to 